do a little orange flash. Maybe it'll get real close here. All right, so I'm getting some sort of a signal, so that's a good sign. Hello, uh, this is Jared again. Uh, I'm just doing a follow-up on the other video. What I'm gonna try to do is just do a little bit of testing. I, I have my curiosities about a couple of these. I just wanna see if I'm getting some spark. So I'm just doing a little bit of troubleshooting with this, uh, the smallest one here. I just wanted to see if there's a little spark tester on here to see if, what, if it's showing me anything. I might try that one here. Um, actually, I don't have a spark plug on that one. I might, I'm just gonna stick with this one. But uh, I don't know where I'm still going with the chainsaws. I kind of want to get back to work on that. So I'm just messing around with some chainsaws to figure out what I really want to do to tear into it, uh, how much I want to tear apart into this, uh, which one I want to start with. I'm probably either going to start with this one or probably the orange steel one, the smaller one, just get the carburetor, just get something back working because that was my main go-to one. And I did want to tinker and work on some of these other ones. So what I'm going to do now is just to, to see if I get any spark, see what it was telling me. It kind of assumed it didn't before. But I just want to mess with the switches and, and put the spark tester in here and see what it shows. If I do this, it's sort of showing it. I guess I guess I can still see it. Let me see. or a wire or maybe the things got to get adjusted so I just wanted to test this I didn't test it before I put some gas in the carburetor and sprayed some in the well in actually into the carburetor some two cycle fuel to see if it would just kind of kick over whether it was going through the carburetor if the carburetor was functioning properly or not but I'm pretty sure it's ain't got no spark so um, maybe it's got a maybe it's grounded out or the coil could be bad or may just need, need some sort of adjustment so uh, I wanted to test that and see what I got and I'm pretty sure I tested that one before I've got sort of the same issues so I don't know if it's just a coil if I'm just gonna fiddle around with it maybe you got a little bit of rust on it sometimes all those type of things happen you usually have a magnetic flywheel that's just like a magnetic mag magneto type of pickup and it'll just have a magnet in the flywheel and this just thing right here with the coiled wire over it and the magnetic field comes and trip, trips it each time it comes around because it fires every time it comes up because it's two stroke. So I just have to get a tear into this issue between this one and this one I think the issues with that. So uh, I think I'm going to either, I'm going to pause this here real quick so I'm going to do some stuff. I'm going to see if I want to pull this apart, if I can access it quick enough. To do that. Let me show you where I'm at. So I took that off. Here. Alright, so here I'm taking this off right here off the side. I took that side housing and I had to take it separated from here because it looks like how this is. This is your chain stop here. If you don't know, that's it, this thing moves right here. There's a handle it's on this like that. But this moves right here and what that does is tightens that band in there. A lot of people might know that, but, but that's just a little band type of oh, a clutch or um, a brake, like a band type of brake. So I'm just taking this off because what I was trying to do is you have to be careful watching whatever you're doing. I had to take this other little small cover off because there was a screw here that holds this. This is pretty sure this is aluminum. It's not plastic, this whole outer casing. And I unscrewed it here and then you have to watch out for the hidden screws, one in here and here and you got to make sure it starts to come apart loose typically sometimes you have to get a screwdriver and tap them apart but it uh, depends on really what you're working on how stuck it is seized up or anything so now we got that out of the way sometimes when you're test firing engines it's better to just not have the chain or bar on it i'll see how i'll be able to do it to test it like this i probably have to put some of the handle and see if i can just omit the chain and the there's no point in having this on here if you're really focused on the operation and running of the engine. This don't need to be on here for safety reasons. So now I'm trying to do is split the rest of this. I don't know. Let me see if I can get it. Hopefully I got it in here. 
I had to just separate that here to get that out of the way. And it, there's a parting line, like basically where the tanks are, right here. So I'm trying to take this whole back thing off with this metal, the, the casing, the outer aluminum casing for this. It's not plastic, this must be old enough one that they didn't use plastic. Uh, there are some plastic things like this side cover, I think it's plastic, but this not. This is, like, well, maybe it's plastic, I don't know if this piece is here. But I'm going to pull this whole thing off like this and see if I can get to the switch and the wiring and check out the magnetors, what I'm working on. All right, so here I am back the next day working on this one chainsaw, and I'm just doing a little update here. Surprisingly, this incorporated, all wedged together, modularized, small chainsaw is really a pain. I've never done this actual model before. But here's the gas tank and the, uh, the oil. It's all one little tank, but I would tip it too far, the gas will flow out through here. So it goes, just push up in here. I had to try to pull it out, because I thought, this little bottom thing right here was sort of like a little thing that's holding it all in. I was trying to wedge it, lift it up or something, and I thought I had to pivot this out right here so that it would lift up. I was trying to push that through and stuff, but then I just kind of pushed it. It was just, sometimes yeah, it's like we're undoing a Rubik's Cube with some of these. That's what it feels like sometimes. And I don't know if it was more this uh, uh, the throttle, the throttle trigger right here. I had to undo the spring. Pull that off there, now it's sort of sitting loose, and I gotta figure that out. But uh, yeah, so now this whole casing, it should slide out like this. So sometimes you have to just kind of keep at it and be kind of delicate as you can. Sometimes things get a little bit stuck, but that's what I was dealing with. So I'm gonna come back with another update on this later and see I'll get this off of there. I'm gonna look at some of the magneto components. I'll go over some of those and uh, and the switch wiring in, the, in a minute. Okay, I got the casing off. This thing was a nightmare. But I'm kind of wondering if, here's the motor, here's, there's your, your flywheel, basically. And there you got your magnets in it, and then your magneto pickup coils down here. So these got these little magnets right in here. So if you've never done that, I'm sure the people have kind of fiddled around with them, kind of figured some of this stuff out. I'm just wondering if it's just sort of grounded out because look how crappy grimy it is so i'm gonna do some cleanup and then i'm gonna i'm gonna try to do some testing but i don't have the sparkle again so i'm gonna try to kind of bench test it and try to flip it over and see if i can get some spark out of it and maybe just clean it up adjust it and maybe this will be good to go maybe that'll be the only the only problem with this it was just this casing inside here i had to pop that bottom thing off i thought it was part of that but I, that's what i figured it's a little so when you put the, the tank on, you get this all situated in this little clam shovel looking thing. That's like a, it's a two piece fuel line. It's just, uh, that pits, I had to push that out of the case. So it's just, um, hopefully you can see, I'm trying to do everything to super check this. But that, that tank, we just push it over with that big hole on the end of it. And then there's an O-ring there. So then it goes into the carburetor. So I'm gonna clean everything up. I, I know that the, it wasn't getting any sparks, so the carburetor is still yet to be seen. I gotta resolve one issue at a time before I can get to that, but I'm gonna try to do this and we're just gonna go from there. Okay, so I blew this off. It could probably be a little bit cleaner. I probably will do some more stuff because I, I don't know. If I pulled it apart this far, part, sometimes you don't know if you ever want to go any further, like uh, with the carburetor, whether I want to, uh, but whether I want to pull that apart because the gaskets tear or something, if I want to try to, just blow it out and clean it out. I want to see what, what I can do with, with it. Maybe it'll, uh, I don't know what, what I want to do with that. But I did, after I cleaned it out, I can't get it to do this with this um, spark plug on it, but here's the tester. Yeah. See a little orange flash. Maybe I'll get real close here. All right, so I'm getting some sort of a signal, so that's a good sign. Um, these little testers, as well as a little bag magne magneto. Well, for, for those who don't know, because this channel could be for anybody, for people who need a little bit more help with troubleshooting or just want some entertainment, whatever. <clears throat> this is what I was talking about. So here's, these are embedded magnets in here, because See, they got these magnets, but they act 
as both the empowerment because this is like a regular coil but it's all like a pickup and a coil every and all in one so the magnet comes around energizes the field and then causes it to pulse because it's basically just a, a coil is a coil a coil of wire so you have a smaller signal however much sort of voltage you get by running this magnet by it and then it steps it up to thousands of voltages so this tester here I'm pretty sure this is some sort of a resistor like a little LED or however they manufacture these things but I don't think you're gonna set this thing off unless you have you know thousands of volts you know you get really high performance ignition system in a car and it's upwards of between 20 to 40,000 volts I don't know if this thing's that high it could be 7,000 volts but it's got to be up there a little bit to trip this I'm pretty sure I'm you know I'm not I'm not super positive but then what good is this if this lights up at 12 volts when you hit, hit it with 7,000 volts it's gonna burn it out so but I, that's basically how it works it's just this this flywheel just keeps spinning around here and it energizes with the, the coils and it trips it at the same time there's no like a points on a car it did it separately the points cause a lot of contact in there to energize the 12 volt from the battery to your coil and it would pulse fire every single time. Well, this does it all in one. It's a magneto. So, maybe a little tip and, and something learned interesting. Um, all right, so I'm heading in for today. I'm done, I'm done working on this one. I'm gonna come back and we'll do some more updates on this particular one. You know, then maybe once we'll in the next video, I'm gonna get into this and I'm gonna find the carburetor. So, I got just like can or jug or something, one of these things here. So, but I'll just kind of show you where I'm at with that and show you that I got the thing sparking. At least for that. I've got some issues. Maybe with the spark plug. I might need a new spark plug, but I'm going to fiddle with that at another time. So, we'll talk to you later for this little segment.